hello. Uh, we are looking at the metropolitan discipline, the, uh, the uh, elements that uh, have to be built up to uh, create that discipline that still does not exist. Today we are going to have a look at the scientific side of the discipline, the technical side, which is the, uh, the curves that really rule the metropolis in the different types of phenomena. We, have, we must be aware of these uh, uh, curves because that will allow us to, to look into the future of the evolution of that phenomena and not to make the mistake misunderstanding what is the evolution. We saw in the first uh, of the presentations uh, how the world is moving from uh, rural to urban and uh, it was in 2010 that we had this uh, equilibrium between 50% of the world population living in rural areas and 50% uh, uh, living in urban areas. But that is growing very fast at a rate of 300,000 people every, every day. That means a metropolis of 2 million people every week. And we are not coping with that. And that curve could look exponential. It seems that will go on forever, that it will increase the speed. That is not so. That curve has an has a asymptote, has a tipping point, where it will remain constant. That has been calculated by demographs by in the range of 11 billion people. No? But what we are dealing now is with the typology of the curve. Those curves are called sigmoids. And we must understand that some of those metropolitan phenomena uh, work within that sigmoid curve. Uh, for instance, we, we saw the population, the, the car ownership. Uh, car ownership uh, generally uh, saturates when you reach a level of 0 0.7 cars per person, seven cars every 10 per, uh, per people. No? When a city reaches that level of seven or eight cars per 10 people, people do not buy any more cars. They substitute the old cars by new, but there is not an increase of cars. So there is an asymptote that is the limit. Uh, unfortunately, many, many countries are still into the z uh, one car every 10 people, three cars every 10 people. So that's why they are growing uh, very fast in car ownership, and that's why we have these enormous traffic jams, because they are not able to manage that traffic nor to produce the public transport. But we are uh, dealing now not with policies, we are dealing with, with curves, and so we see that this is an, as, uh, an as, asymptote curve, uh, a sigmoid, and we must realize that there is a limit, a saturation, and it doesn't go uh, growing forever. We saw as well how infrastructure in a metropolis as well has a limit. Once you have all the metros, all the trains, all the airports, and all the... Uh, you don't need to go into that pace of building up the metropolis, the metropolis is al almost already built and you have to improve it, obviously, you have to introduce new technologies and you have to, 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 to change the elements because your economy is changed, your social needs are changing and so on, but it's not anymore the effort to build it. And we see that in many metropolises of the world, we, ha we have seen the periods before having the uh, infrastructures, then having the infrastructures, then managing or taming the infrastructures, and the different metropolises around the world are in different stages of that evolution, and or uh, in the evolution, the metropolis enter in that phase in a certain moment of time, and uh, went into the next phase in a different moment of time, and in the slides, uh, you, have, you have some examples of that. And that curve is, a, is again, as you see, a sigmoid. We have the other types of curves, which is the growth, uh, the, the, the expansion of the metropolis, not only in population, in, in urban growth. And uh, those curves might look as an exponential curve, like a logarithmic curve, but they are, in fact, not. You see there the emerging metropolis, which are growing at 5%, many of them uh, per year. That means that they are doubling every 14 years, and we saw that in one of the previous uh, presentations. And others, uh, more stable metropolises that are growing at a smaller pace. But the uh, logarithmic and exponential uh, uh, curve works mainly on the economies of scale expansive move. No? And we saw how an animal, as it grows, bigger is more efficient in energy consumption and how metropolis as well as they will grow bigger they multiply 
their productivity and their efficiency. And that's why metropolis are growing. And that is more of an exponential, of an exponential curve. Then there is another curve we have seen uh, in another presentation, which is the wound curve. No? You grow, you grow to a top of uh, an efficiency, and then there is a moment you uh, start not to be so efficient, you, you come down, and then you, you really get into a grid lock, and, 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 and you die, or you, you really go to a zero. And the, the wound curve was thought about, about uh, a psychological reaction to complexity. If you are in front of a work of art, if it's very simple, it doesn't provide you the, the artistic uh, emotion. If it grows more complex, you, you end up with a full artistic uh, uh, emotion. And then if it goes too complex, it even can be painful. And we see that in, in uh, music or in art in, in many ways. No, but that works as well as a metropolis, for instance, with traffic. You grow, you have a number of, uh, of uh, roads uh, with a capacity and you grow in traffic and you are being more efficient because people are, going to, uh, are able to move around. But there is a moment that, that's called the moment of congestion when you put another car in and the amount of time taken by all the, 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 the amount of time taken by all the other cars which are already in the system is going to be slower. And so introducing a car, instead of providing more efficiency, is reducing the efficiency of the whole system. When you are with that kind of uh, curve, and then you introduce more and more cars, and you end up with a gridlock, and the whole metropolis is at stand, and that's where metropolis do not work, and we have many examples all around the world. Nairobi has uh, jams that uh, take three hours to, to dissolve, and so on. So that's how you manage that. You can either increase the infrastructure, or you can manage that infrastructure in a different way, in such a way that it will be more efficient, and so on. So this is by moving that curve in capacity, as you see the red curve uh, against the, the black one, you are increasing the capacity uh, by two ways, of management or uh, infrastructure and investment. But you must be aware of that when you make a decision into the metropolis. And even though there is a limit to that, even if you increase the infrastructures or you increase the management, there is a, a limit to that. And in that limit is when you have to change the paradigm of the metropolis. You have an inception moment of growth in a certain context, you have a maturity and you start a decline. When you cannot increase that capacity, when you are really into a limit, you have to change the paradigm. And that kind of paradigm is to, to, to get into a new kind of curve. And that kind of paradigm is what we are living now in the metropolitan area. We are living a moment where the urban approach that we had until now does not work anymore. We are seeing how metropolis are not able to, to manage themselves, no? And we have to change the paradigm of dealing with the metropolis. And this is wh what these uh, inception lectures are trying to promote, that change of paradigm from the worm to the snake, from the DNA of a city to a DNA of a metropolis. We are in the moment of doubt and uncertainty. We are in the moment we don't really know how to, to change that paradigm. This is what we are doing and researching in MIT, in Milano Polytechnica, profe uh, professors and professionals from all over the world, building up that discipline of knowledge that will provide us with the new metropolitan paradigm that we'll be able to. We can be more precise. We in Madrid in 1996, and we will have a presentation about Madrid, we, we introduce a new way of dealing with the metropolis that we think is the basic of all the things that we are talking today. No? And uh, I published a book about the, the, those issues. No? And we are in a moment that this is taking momentum has not yet become the, uh, the, the, the way we deal with metropolis. And we had the occasion in Habitat 3 2016 in Quito to introduce the metropolitan uh, uh, genoma, the metropolitan uh, dimension into urban planning. But uh, we will have to wait uh, a few years to, to develop that discipline in a much more reliable way. The sooner we realize that we have to change the paradigm, the more efficient it will be. As you can see by these curves, the longer you take to change the paradigm, the, more the less efficient you will be because it will take longer for the new paradigm to take off and to go into, into growth. No? 
there are uh, uh, some uh, uh, intellectuals, professionals, uh, professors like uh, ja uh, Janice Perlman or Pat McLogan that are dealing with that way of making the mental revolution of a change of a paradigm, which is even much more difficult, that mental revolution of the paradigm. than. Uh, then we have an, another type of curve, which is the curve, the frequency curve, no? that has two bumps, and you cannot go from one bump to the other without a, 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 a valley of, uh, of, of inefficiency. That is, for instance, the way the governments, the nations work, uh, the, the market-driven economies versus the, uh, the economies driven by the government, by the state. If you have a market-driven economy, you, you need some aspects of uh, public involvement, producing the infrastructure, producing the common goods, for the economy to reach the, the best moment in growth. And if you have a, 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 a government-driven uh, economy, you have as well certain level of efficiency, which is lower than the market-driven, but uh, it, there is some efficiency. There is no way of going from one to the other uh, in, a, in a slope uh, and, and you have a valley. That's why you move from one system to the other through revolutions and you cannot have a gentle slope from one system to the other. But within the market-driven system, you have the top efficiency that it requires an involvement of the government of around 40-45% of, of the economy, which is a certain European uh, governments uh, states are, are in that range, like France, no? When you reach the maximum efficiency, but that's not the maximum economic efficiency. The maximum economic efficiency is achieved when you have the maximum marginal returns. And that marginal returns is represented by the slope, not by the, the, by the absolute number. And you reach that maximum slope in lower levels in 30% uh, involvement of the, of the government, which is rich in other countries like, for instance, in the United States. So you have this within a democratic system, within a market economy, you have that difference. And you must understand this curve to understand what to do with your metropolis. That curve has many, many aspects. Uh, and it can be uh, uh, calibrated for every one of the phenomena you are uh, uh, studying in the metropolis. It has aspects in traffic, it has aspects in housing, how the uh, quality of the house and the cost of the house relates to the income of the uh, uh, social group. And then finally we have a much more complex system, which is the quadratics uh, curves in, 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 in the metropolises, which are produced by uh, this complexity of, of, uh, 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 of curves which are called in some occasions lofted curves. No? The metropolises are metropolis because they are in a strategic location, generally between two ecosystems, the sea and the land, a passage of the river, the bottom of a valley, the opening of a passage in a mountain uh, range into a valley. So the metropolis have uh, a, a, a directionality, which is the coast, which is the river, which is the valley, and so on. And they are not in a featureless plane with no element uh, significant that will determine their, their uh, shape. The metropolis are determined by a very strong geographical location, which is the location advantage, and that's why they are metropolis. And we will talk about that in the future presentations. But that provides them with a main directionality and a transversal directionality. The main directionality is the directrix of the, of the quadratic curve, and the uh, uh, perpendicular directionality is the generatrix of the quadratic curve. And we must understand these complexities to be able to deal with the physical decisions that will create the metropolis. We have then a system of linearities, uh, the generatrix and the directrix, that create a pattern of a reticula, of a quadricula, which is in fact a matrix. And you can deal with those matrices in a mathematical way by providing numbers to these different areas of the metropolis and working together what is the composition that will reach the equilibri equilibrium in the social, 
social equity or economic efficiency. We have many examples of those matrices around the world. I am just presenting uh, nine of them here. Uh, Cairo, uh, Mumbai, uh, Mexico, Tehran, Istanbul, Maputo, Abuja, Bogota, and Nairobi, but we have many, many, many. And the way you deal with those um, uh, reticular systems of the metropolis is using matricial uh, matrix uh, mathematics and dealing, this is an example, of London, how the boroughs of London with different figures and different elements can be uh, seen and analyzed in the way they, they, they behave, their pattern, and then you can provide policies in the same kind of approach looking for the objectives. And this is again another uh, map of America with this kind of matricial work as the quadratics as they work in the, in the uh, territory. Thank you very much. We will see next time the strategic and structural uh, procedures to control and to harness and to manage a metropolis. And you can download these uh, slides from uh, the uh, links which are in the slide. Thank you very much.